Hi, everybody. It is February 20, 2019. How many videos have I posted on these weather fronts that begin in the Gulf and go on all the way up to Canada, thousands, thousands of miles? We didn't have these kinds of storms before, but now they're no longer unusual. Now we are seeing them pretty much, uh, well, rather frequently. So what is happening right here in this area that we have these storms, they've got their tail in the Gulf of Mexico and they ride on up to Canada. What's going on here? Well, maybe this one doesn't get all the way to Canada, at least not on this site, but it's thousands and thousands of miles and it just seems to be rather thin uh, weather front that brings a lot of rain um, to all the areas that are underneath this weather front. It is getting very, look, our world now has become this world where everything is controlled by, yeah, rather evil people who have decided that we're just going to have no sun, horizon to horizon, manufactured gray cloud and rain. A neighbor just told me, we have a week more of this. A week? Oh, really? Where did this come from? I go on radar sites pretty regularly. Where did it come from? Because there was nothing uh, visible for this storm. It came out of nowhere. You see the Doppler radar, the pulsing, the straight edged what, how, all right, we're not going to get through to people. Those who want to believe it's global warming, climate change, and won't do the research on weather modification or even listen to you, that's it. They're done. They're, they're fried and they're incapable of getting, getting that man is controlling the weather. And well, because they're, a large group, they are in the minority, uh, majority, we are in the minority. Uh, this is going to continue and there's no turning back. We're never going to get back to what we had even just uh, not too long ago. All weather is controlled by man. I am, and along with others that I talk to, are experiencing the effects of this weather that we have here. I have to wonder what they're dumping into the atmosphere. Biologicals, certainly the chemicals and the heavy metals. A couple of days ago, I suddenly had mosquitoes in my apartment biting me. Mosquitoes, it's February. I now have allergies. What, late onset allergies, really? Never had allergies. Now, I have these sneezing fits that don't let up for, no joke, 24 hours. And if I'm not actually sneezing, it feels like I'm going to sneeze, which is a really annoying feeling. Okay, this I got earlier couple of hours ago. Keep in mind these beams that you see right here in Georgia crossing. These beams crossing. Boom. Okay. Um, which I'll get to in a little bit. But uh, something is going on here. 
I've never seen this. And I do not think it's a glitch. You know, the College of DuPage, I do not believe that this is a glitch. Something is happening in this weather front. Could it be swarms of ants? Keep that in mind. Crossing beams, swarms, ant swarms. Um, but something is taking place right here. And you can see all of what glitters. Well, it's not gold, but something uh, is taking place. And it starts... Well, you can see all of the aerosol spraying taking place in the Gulf, feeding into this weather front. The straight-edged you know, lines, all of the ripples, the microwaves, none of this is natural. But what is taking place here? What is going on here? Something. Something is in this. And radar is picking it up. You see little, little um, sparks that erupt right down here in the Gulf, and then suddenly, right down here, and then you've got manufactured cloud. Okay, uh, I don't know exactly what this is, but it's no glitch. I've never seen it before. I, I can only guess, and I'll take you through my guessing, but it's, it's hard to live this. I, I don't... Look at all the microwaves taking place here. Now, you see bits of these high frequency, you see the red, the heating, the high frequency heating taking place in this weather front, and it does just so happen to be in the same area where we see a whole lot of sparkling Christmas lights. The uh, microwaves, very apparent. I know you guys know, but this, you know, what this is doing to life on this planet. All life, our life, all life, it's um, destroying it. destroying it. I also want to show you here on the Mimic map that we have something we've got chaos, instability, turbulence taking place right where I showed you right here in this area it's clear that something is creating great instability right here. That is not... something is interfering. And yeah, well, you could think frequencies. But look, a week now. When you know that this is generated by man, yeah, it does piss you off. Um, look at all of... I mean, it's so obvious that something is terribly wrong here. You have a split in the jet stream, splitting, stretching you know, this precipitation right here up in Canada and you have this 
this end going to the west, north, and this going to the east, and going down south, and nothing is making sense when you go on these sites. You see the jet stream is going all over the place. It doesn't make any sense. It, it, what it does show you is just how dangerous man is in usurping the natural processes and doing whatever the hell man wants to do. But you can see all of the microwaves, you can see all of the defined areas of the precipitation right here taking place. That is caused by frequencies. And, you know, no, Mother Nature does not work in these rectangles. But here, you know, we have these thousands of miles of weather front that erupt kind of out of nowhere. Then you hear, you're going to have a week of this. So they will be feeding, feeding this storm for a week. Think about that mega storm that the, uh, what is it, the geological survey people have said is coming into LA, California, a mega storm, which will create three times the damage of a major earthquake. And that mega storm, it will go on for several weeks. And I said in that video, are they going to be experimenting with, okay, let's keep rain going for weeks. And I'm living it. It's going on and on. So they're building up more uh, off the coast of Mexico, feeding it. You can see all of the geoengineering taking place. Uh, let's go to the regional sections. Look at all of this. Look at all of the microwaves that they use to modify weather that they use to increase temperature. You can see them, all of these ripples caused by microwaves. Look at all of the aerosol spraying, the laying of the uh, nanoparticulates, the chemicals, the heavy metals, and no doubt the biologicals. So they're feeding this. Uh, perhaps they're creating even more down here in the Gulf, right off the coast of Louisiana. Uh, and they can they can make these these things explode. But I for one, this is getting hard, guys. It's getting hard. And you know what? When you're depressed already and you never see the sun, you're like, okay, so maybe you get two hours every five days but this is what you're living day after day after day. It has a detrimental effect, to say the least. All right, the crossing of the beams. I want you to listen to this. It's very important. Sorry, my computer is really shot. My computer's going. All right, listen to it just a few minutes. Hey, everybody. Dutch Sense here. 2.43 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. And I've got you over here on my webpage. I'm going to put a link down below to this so you guys can read up on this and investigate yourself on this new discovery that was just announced on CBS News of all places on the 21st yesterday or day and a half ago, announcing that the use of dual beams, in this case lasers, also frequency, can be used to have an interacting effect with each other one beam used to strip electrons from the atmosphere the other beam used to pump up that area of plasma that's created that then forms CCN cloud condensation nuclei particles which form into raindrops and they can target the beams cross them use one beam to pump the other one and produce weather and this is confirmed here's the article down below the graduate students have done the experiments in the laboratory and also can control lightning. 
So we're not just talking about making a plasma area, making lightning and controlling where it goes using two transmitters. Now scalar interferometry, that is something that was a term that was coined by Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden in the 1980s, where he talked about two transmitters crossing their beams, having a heating effect, a plasma effect at a distance, which then can be used for anything from missile defense to causing weather, causing earthquakes, and he explains it all. In the 1980s, he does a full conference. This is just a small part of that. I think it's like two hours long. Anyways, you can watch Thomas Bearden explain scalar radar in the 1980s, or you can read the article confirming one beam over the other, one pulses, their word, not mine, into the other, creating the plasma bubble and controlling it. And they call it a filament. Now, here's a diagram showing real-life examples of scalar interferometry happening. We're talking about two beams crossing, having an effect or an excitement where the beams cross. Here's another one. Where the beam crosses, the other beam is excited. And here's an example, real life, again, in a storm where we have two intersecting radar stations, one right in the middle, and we've got a interferometry happening in between the three. This is during the time of the Joplin tornado. That was manufactured. Okay. I will link below to everything. You can listen to the end. And there's only about a minute left. Crossing of beams and you can create weather. Crossing of beams and you can create weather. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I also want to bring your attention to nanotechnology geoengineering. And I will link below to all of these documents. I'm not going to be going into a whole lot of um, what these documents are saying. You can read them. Uh, the link is below. Um, it would be great if others would post videos on it. Uh, yeah, I am not myself, so, but emergence of nanotechnology and geoengineering. Huh. Wow. Well, um, let's see, what is this? This is going to be Northrop Grumman. Ah, that fabulous defense contractor the intersection of technology innovation and creativity and they talk about nanotechnology the science of weather manipulation of course they lie saying well we don't really have uh the technology to create or cr control weather oh bullshit i hate it but i just want to also bring your th this is a defense contractor cultured meat how to make a chicken nugget without a chicken. Mmm, doesn't that sound just fabulous? Storm control with weather machine technology. You might want to check out this and all defense contracting websites. They have a lot of interesting information. But what is this? Operational defenses through weather control in 2030. Huh. Operational defenses through weather control in 2030. Well, everything that they say in this document, they are doing already. But when you do control F and you can search words, I put in nanotechnology. I'm sorry, you can't see it right there. But let's just go through nanotechnology. How many hits. Ooh, wow. 55. The future of nanotechnology will enable creation of stratus cloud formations to defeat directed energy weapons. Oh, I thought directed energy weapons, that was just a conspiracy theory. All right, so let's check it out. Um, the future of nanotechnology will create cloud. Um, and I give you nanotechnology in the contents. Autonomous nanotechnology swarm. Huh. 
Well, uh, let me, I marked a couple of pages. Let's go to page 15, or the 15th. Um, no, sorry. Um, hang on for one sec. Okay. Nanotechnology enabled sensors and networks answered the problems of measuring, altering, and communicating the variables within a weather system. Let's go to mm, 19. Yes, autonomous nanotechnology swarms. I asked you to hold in your mind ants, ants. Autonomous nanotechnology swarms. Autonomous nanotechnology swarms is currently being researched by Goddard Space Flight Center, and this, I believe, was. 2005. Oh, let me bring you back up to um, check out the date. Okay, sorry, it was 2009. And you know that when, when you can have access to this, you know that they've already mastered and they're using what they are describing in these documents. So I'm going to bring you back to uh, 19, which is the Autonomous Nanotechnology Swarms. And I have no doubt that they are using this because I see cloud erupt in the sky. I don't see any planes. Uh, nothing happens, you know, there's no change in humidity, there's no change. But suddenly I will see, boom, cloud. And then lined clouds, kind of like what we are seeing um, on these sites, these lines that just suddenly appear. That's what I see happening in the sky in Anderson, South Carolina. But there's no aerosol spraying taking place. They just suddenly appear. Now, I know that they have loaded our atmosphere with an awful lot of chemicals, and I'm going to bring you to that as well. How they can create cloud with electricity and chemicals. But when your atmosphere is so saturated with all of these chemicals, oh, there's no need to see, you know, the uh, aerosol spraying and then the lingering contrail and the expansion. That can happen without a plane leaving behind an aerosol um, emission. But, yeah, so it's modeled after insects. Ants is a network architecture applicable to future nano factories. Uh, Goddard Space Flight Center is currently using ants beginnings in experiments with large-scale robot herds. ANTS is the support structure for addressable, reconfigurable technology, ART. The core of ART is a networked swarm, swarm of nanomachines capable of configuring themselves for a variety of tasks. Wow! Nano, nanotechnology. 
atmospheric modification at the molecular molecular level share development with the uh, capabilities of nano machines. It's a combination of nano pumps working at the molecular level which can transport water between layers in the atmosphere as the balloons bob up and down in the air column. Nano factories can conduct electrolysis on water uh, changing the molecules, building nuclei of droplets or ice crystals, or reducing water vapor, cooling through thermoelectric nanomaterials currently being designed for computer applications. Well, I missed the algorithm. I, and I think it was Cindy Gray, but it might have been somebody else, who talked of algorithms controlling our weather. Artificial intelligence, it's not coming, it's here. And we may very well have artificial intelligence controlling our weather already. And well, it has been said, artificial intelligence will soon um, start attacking the human being due to how low of a consciousness the human race has. And it won't be our friend. And we might be seeing that already, considering the weather of that. <laughs> artificial intelligence may be giving us. Okay, so um, nanotechnology enables the two critical humps in weather control. By the year 2030 time frame, nanotechnology will allow complex models to receive accurate and timely data from within and across the atmospheric system. These models can then direct those elements, the nanotechnology, in the atmosphere to make changes in the atmospheric system. Um, it might have been earlier that I saw the algorithm information. Let me just see if I can quickly bring you to it and, and if I can't the link is below or actually what I'll do is I will delete nanotechnology and put in algorithms and it comes up with nothing algorithm right here Yes, weather generation algorithm. Weather generation algorithm and then fill in the variables required to generate the desired effects. All controlled by computer. Micro and nanotechnology. That's what provides both a detailed sensor grid for the weather generation algorithm. Jesus. Well, it's happening, guys. So I want to once again just read some of this artificial clouds in the Earth's Atmosphere Foreign Technology Division. This was um, a translated uh, Russian paper. And what are they writing about? Artificial luminous clouds. Yes the pink, the yellow, all of the fabulous um, colors that we are seeing today in our atmosphere. I absolutely do believe that we're seeing that because our atmosphere now is so loaded and unfortunately toxic 
with all of these nanoparticulates, the chemicals, the heavy metals. So they propose discharging a small quantity of sodium vapor into the atmosphere by rockets. And this was in 1950s, in the 1950s, um, because of resonant emission. The sodium atoms illuminated by the sun should form a luminous cloud in the atmosphere, clearly visible from the Earth. And yes, I do think that that is what we are seeing. Experiments confirm sodium atoms glow in the upper atmosphere. After sodium, there were more experiments. Other substances began to be used, such as lithium, potassium, cesium, barium oxide, europium, titanium, tetrachloride, and trimethyl aluminum, capable of creating neutral and even ionized clouds, which is what we have. Our atmosphere is ionized. They have altered our atmosphere. And you wonder why we're seeing life die. New types of artificial cloud appeared. Ah, wow. Smoke clouds formed and at stratospheric and mesospheric altitudes. Hang on for one sec. I posted this video on the artificial cloud, the smoke cloud, and what you will see is um, pictures that I got from um, Google Image, and these are from uh, scientific journals or papers. These are smoke clouds, artificial clouds, that we see. And I've seen them in Anderson, South Carolina. What you see right here, this is a smoke cloud. Um, it only gets more cauliflowered looking with all of the black and the gray on the periphery of the cloud. But this is obviously not a <laughs> natural cloud. We did not have clouds that looked like this. We did not have gray and black. Black that just suddenly appears off of the cloud. No. This is manufactured by man. Look. Wow. A smoke cloud is happening. You can see it right before your very eyes. The creation of a smoke cloud. It's obvious. It just kept getting more and more black and gray. And they can grow very big. Very big indeed. So, um, let me uh, get back to... Yes, new type of artificial cloud. The smoke clouds. The use of various substances, um, various, the lithium and the um, barium and that whole list, glow as a result of chemical reactions with environmental components. Glow. In the 1970s, research on electrical fields from observations of the drift of ionized clouds. Well. That's what we are now. Uh, we're, we're seeing not natural clouds. We see manufactured clouds, and they have an awful lot of different methods in which they can manufacture cloud. You know, with simplicity, it's simple. The cloud was generated. The intensity of illumination in different spectral bands different colors. The chemicals, depending on what they used, gave them different colors. So when we're seeing all the pink and the, 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 the incredible um, golds and oranges and red and in our atmosphere, especially when the sun is setting, that's because our atmosphere is saturated. It is so toxic now with chemicals and heavy metals.
as soon as the cloud appeared in the atmosphere, an astonishing spectacle, whose beauty is probably only exceeded by the polar aurora, begins to unfold in the sky. A long blue-green wake forms in the atmosphere from the discharge of trimethyl aluminum, interspersed with red and orange spheres from the discharges of lithium and sodium. Barium bursts out in a light blue cloud, rapidly separated into neutral and ionized parts, which go off in uh, different directions. As time passes, this entire rather closely grouped structure begins to be whimsical, transforms by the vertical structure of the wind, molecular and turbulent diffusion, 20 to 30 minutes, only weak reflections, and then it soon disappears. How many times do we see what appears uh, at, like our clouds are burning they suddenly emit, this is during the day, not around sunset, suddenly you'll see, and I'm sorry for not bringing it up, let me just spend a few minutes looking if I can find something, if not, I'll try to describe it. Well, I can't find exactly what I wanted to show you, but what you are seeing and this was back in Great Barrington, when I lived in Great Barrington. This was like 2011. Uh, this was going on. This was going on even before 2011. So, is this the uh, natural catastrophe that they're hiding from us, that so many people are claiming that this is not uh, due to all of the chemicals and the heavy metals that they have been spraying? into the atmosphere? No, this is absolutely caused by the chemicals and the heavy metals. And, you know, it's like remarkable that people, you know, don't just <laughs> like stop on the street and ask what the hell is going on? What is going on? Um, I have a playlist, a geoengineering playlist with a lot of the videos that I have taken. Um, so I will, you can check it out, um, really? No, this is caused by, and look, I've always said this, so let me backtrack. We cannot definitively know exactly what is taking place unless we are in the know. Well. Maybe some people are in the know, but I'm not, and I don't know if they are. All I know is based on all of my research, this is caused by the dumping, the saturation of nanoparticulates in our atmosphere, all of the chemicals, all of the heavy metals. They've altered our atmosphere, as you can see. and now this is just well this is what you get unless of course you get the horizon to horizon cloud coverage that just well doesn't allow you to see anything but barium strontium aluminum aluminum they were experimenting with these substances back in the 50s. Now our atmosphere is completely overloaded and unfortunately toxic. It's toxic, guys. This is what we breathe. You know, this, this is really just not anything that anybody would want to breathe. <laughs> Right? I, we have very weird things happening. Suddenly this rainbow appeared in a, in a, like, orange sky. A double rainbow. Um,
and it's uh, here you can see the use of frequencies and and all of the different colors and you wonder why so many of us feel like hell but very often you see how luminous they do become and they look like they have been burned like they were like it's a hot hot red poker um, not sure why I included included that but in this video I in the uh, video that I posted artificial cloud proof um, West uh, watch yesterday's storm creation you can see because I filmed it the creation of a storm the clouds there were three huge well smoke clouds and you watch them all as if there's like nanotechnology and they're talking they come together they smoothed it out into like a mini roll cloud and they literally launched the cloud and suddenly we got high winds and well it wasn't really all that much rain this is what it looked like you know it just changed it literally changed right above my head these clouds they did not move they created this storm above my head then the wind the whole thing came together and it was lined, of course, because the use of frequencies. It was a straight-edged line, and that's the amount of rain that was produced by that bizarre cloud. And, of course, you never get what you used to get when you had these, well, storms, thunderstorms. Um, you don't get the brilliant blue skies anymore. Or... <laughs> that fabulous um, cleansed air. No, now it smells dirty and toxic after the rain. So guys, look, um, what can I say? It's, I'm really tired of it. Could these be that nanotechnology swarm that we're looking at? It, it looked like a glitch at first to me because this is glitching down here. You know, this is the, the, the time of the loop and it's going quickly. But when I saw these little sparks starting down here in the Gulf. You can see them. And you might not be able to see it in my video, but click on the link below and watch it. They're sparking. They're laying the aerosols. And then they're hitting it with something. Little sparks and boom, you get cloud. All right, I'll link below to everything. I so wish we didn't have to live this. I so wish we didn't have to experience the symptoms that come from all of this technology. All I can say is continue uh, every single day to um, keep your immune system strong because whatever they are dumping in addition to these nanoparticulates, the chemicals and the heavy metals, all of these mystery illnesses and 
what they're defined, what they diagnose as flu, but people aren't able to get over the coughing that they're experiencing. Um, We don't know what else, but you can see all of the aerosols. They're very clear on this site. And I have to wonder if they're going to feed this weather front into this one to keep it alive for a really long time. I hope you guys are well. I hope we don't have any flash flooding. I've thought about that as I was doing this video. Are we going to see more and more people suffering the consequences of this weather manipulation, the use of weather as a weapon? All links are below. Ciao, guys.